Have you ever been cruising on a highway and wondered, where the heck are all those trucks going? There's a behind the scenes world of logistics that makes virtually everything in our modern lives possible. Not only do we take it for granted, we're completely oblivious to its environmental cost. But thanks to a handful of companies, there's a hidden revolution happening that, as it turns out, is perfectly suited to delivering a cleaner future. For years, online ordering and rapid home delivery have been booming. And thanks to the pandemic, this trend has evolved into a way of life. But what actually happens when I click that tempting button to buy, let's say, an old school, real hardcover book? For mighty Amazon, which tends to capture the lion's share of all book sales, they're trucked along with other books to one of several Amazon inbound fulfillment centers. Now the book is in Amazon's massive fulfillment network. Copies then journey along the so-called middle mile and can be redistributed to any of the hundreds of smaller warehouses or nodes closer to customers and major population centers. The last step is the so-called last mile, how it gets to a buyer's home. The book might be sent to an Amazon delivery station then put in the back of a Mercedes Sprinter van and dropped off by Amazon itself at the customer's front door. This system, while it's a marvel of modern day logistics, still relies mostly on traditional combustion engine vehicles for middle and last mile delivery. As demand for rush delivery rises, so does the number of gas guzzling trucks hustling between warehouses. Environmentally, it's one of the biggest issues there is. And you know, the quicker that the globe can sort of decarbonize transportation, the better it's gonna be. So if you look at total greenhouse gas emissions in the US, about 28% of that is transportation. And of that chunk of the 28%, about a quarter of it come from medium and heavy duty trucks. So middle mile and sort of long haul trucking. If you really wanna move the needle on carbon emissions, this is a really good place to look. So how do we solve this growing emissions problem and still satisfy our addiction to same day delivery? As it turns out, the size, shape, and predictable limited range of these vehicles makes them the perfect candidate for a solution. I'm Dakota Semler. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Exos Trucks. So we are a manufacturer of commercial electric vehicles. We manufacture trucks that are in the class five size all the way up to class eight regional haul tractors. And those are things like the UPS or FedEx step vans that you see delivering packages every day. We actually started this because we were fleet operators ourselves. Um, we had a, a fleet of medium duty vehicles and we saw how challenging it was becoming to operate diesel vehicles. The technology exists to convert last mile fleets from diesel to electric. Batteries and, and the prices of those batteries have fallen dramatically in the last 10 years and any routes that are around 200 miles or less are really ready to make that transition. So Exos is trying to perfect the frame of the car. They call it the chassis. So this is everything sort of underpinning the car, the electric motors, the battery pack, all the battery software and cooling and technology and kind of the brains of the car, if you will. And then the business model is basically to sell that and let the end consumer dictate what goes on top. Our platform we call the X platform UPS is using an X platform with a parcel delivery van body on top of it. Loomis, who operates an armored car fleet, uses the same exact X platform, but with an armored body on top of it. Exos is currently making their modular battery packs here in Los Angeles, and the packs can be customized for specific applications. But while one big problem, vehicle cost, is improving as battery prices continue to fall, there's still another major hurdle at the other end. The best way to describe the current state of charging infrastructure in the U.S. is anemic. These companies don't want to build chargers unless they're electric vehicles. People don't want to buy electric vehicles unless there's chargers. That's a big problem for the personal EV space, where range anxiety is often cited as a roadblock to mass adoption. But when it comes to delivery, there's a much simpler solution. When you think about last mile vehicles, they're not operating in different bases of operation they actually return to the same depot every single night where they do their charging. Exos actually has a division helping fleets install that charging infrastructure. 
these fleets will actually bring their vehicles back to the yard, they charge them overnight, and then by the time morning rolls around for their next shift, those vehicles are fully charged, ready to go with the infrastructure that's on site. With pilot programs up and running with delivery giants UPS, FedEx, and Amazon, Exos is quickly becoming a major contender in the electrification game. But there's another enormous part of this puzzle, which may end up eliminating more than just gasoline. So I'm Gautam Narang. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Gatek. Uh, at Gatek, we do autonomous vehicles for the middle mile segment of the supply chain. Again, middle mile is one step back from last mile, trucking that goes from one factory or warehouse to another. The, the middle mile is, is evolving at a, at a rapid pace. And with the pandemic, the middle mile segment of the supply chain was put into high gear. The prominence and the significance of uh, the middle mile is only gonna grow uh, in the coming years. So Gaddock's a, a really interesting company. What they're doing is trying to both make middle mile delivery autonomous and electric. So they're trying to move the ball in, in two ways here. And what's really interesting with them is they focus specifically on a certain sector of users, namely large companies that have very fixed routes. Just as the predictable routes of shipping and delivery make electrification easier, they make autonomy a lot easier too. If your trucks are going the same way every single time, like Gotix, that's a much easier puzzle for an AI to navigate. So what they do, they find the route they need to run and they agonize over it for four to six weeks, just mapping it inside and out, figuring out where all the trouble spots might be and, and coding their vehicles to deal with it. And often it's not, they're not taking the most direct route, they're taking the safest route. They're taking the route that's most predictable in terms of traffic. There's a common understanding in the industry that unpredicted left turns and doing multiple lane changes are some of the most trickiest problems in the AV space. With middle mile, frankly, you can avoid all of that. You can take three right turns to make a left turn. You know, a, a bag of potatoes uh, won't care. Gatek's ultimate goal is to provide a cheaper, cleaner alternative to the middle mile of today by saving money on gas and maintenance via electric motors and saving money on, well, drivers by going autonomous. They've already sold some major players on their vision and scoring Walmart as a customer bodes well for the future. Startups like Gatek and Exos are betting that the delivery industry is ready for a full-on high-tech refit. In a sector where only about 1% of vehicles have been electrified, that's a lot of potential for change. You know, the usual suspects are where you're gonna see adoption come first. You know, the larger, more stable companies. So Walmart, Amazon, UPS, FedEx, etc. I think you'll see them experimenting with it more and, and the more routes that they can get it to make sense on, the, the faster adoption's gonna be. And as the technology matures and batteries continue to get cheaper, there's another huge category of vehicles that's ripe for this kind of an upgrade. Uh, so the Biden administration has been super aggressive about a pledge to electrify the entire federal vehicle fleet, which is just under 700,000 vehicles. What's interesting is the federal fleet is both really old and really inefficient. The average age of these cars and trucks is about 14 years, and the average cost is about a dollar a mile when you add up fuel and maintenance and depreciation, which are the three big ones. It's a good place to look if you're looking to, to get carbon out of the transportation system. While the most exciting and flashy developments in the world of electric vehicles are usually around personal EVs, the more impactful transition is happening behind the scenes. So the next time you order something online and it effortlessly appears on your doorstep, your package might have made at least some of its hidden journey without consuming an ounce of gasoline.